Hey guys, how's everybody doing? Uh, since we seem to talk about this about three times a week here lately, it seems like we're going to talk today about the CAD system on the second generation RAM. Behind me, you can see that I have my 1997 RAM 2500. Um, it is four wheel drive, so this is going to be exactly what we're talking about when we talk about the CAD system on these trucks. Now, when we talk about the CADs, of course, you know, four wheel drive, it is the central axle disconnect system that Dodge used. The reason Dodge used this system is it was so that they didn't have to use the front locking hubs that Ford and Chevrolet were using in the late 90s. You, you know, you, that whole get out of the truck, turn the hubs in. Nobody liked that, so this was Dodge's answer to try to find a way to have that disconnect so you get some fuel mileage and have it work automatically. Overall, the system works pretty well. Um, yeah, now that these trucks are getting to be 20 years old, this system does have some issues. But for the most part, this system operates pretty flawlessly as long as you maintain it. And just, you know, when it has an issue, just take a couple precautions with it. So we're gonna look right here on the truck. You get to get the transfer case. We're in two wheel drive. So we're gonna start with, I'm gonna show you, there's been a lot of, lot of discussion lately about should this, should that. This truck is in two wheel drive right now, so we're gonna crawl underneath it. And here's our, here's our front drive shaft going to our front differential. And yes, you should be able to turn, to free spin that while the truck is not in two wheel drive, or while the truck is in two wheel drive. Without everything engaged, you should be able to free spin this shaft. And that's on both, you know, comes from the trans, it is connected here at the transfer case down to the front axle. Another thing that a lot of people seem to be confused on with these systems is whether or not the tires should be able to turn on them. So I've got my jack out here already. We'll give it a couple pumps and get that front wheel up off the ground so we can take a look at it. And yes, while this truck is in two wheel drive, the axle is disconnected. So yes, you should be able to free spin the front wheel. And if you look, if you can see back here, it's trying to get, get a good angle on it. Kind of hard to see, but you can see while I'm turning the wheel, the drive shaft isn't turning. And the reason the drive shaft isn't turning is because the CAD is disconnected. And now what the CAD does, we'll crawl in here so you can kind of see the CAD itself. It's just a vacuum motor that connects two shafts on the passenger side of the axle. So here's our CAD. Uh, we got it in there. Yeah, right there it is. So this is the vacuum diaphragm. And then this is the housing. This wire over here is actually for your four wheel drive switch. When you put the transfer case into gear, if you don't have a light on yet, it's because your CAD has not, dis has not engaged. Now, if you're in a situation where your four wheel drive light stays on all the time, it's because your CAD is staying engaged all the time. One thing I do recommend with these trucks is when you pull that lever into four wheel drive, kind of rock it back and forth a little bit until you get the light on the dash on before you really give it any throttle. Otherwise that collar slams in, it's a bang, it's really hard on everything on the system. So basically this is a two-way diaphragm. Vacuum comes in on either side of it to control a yoke inside that slides a collar back and forth between the jack shaft and the outer axle shaft. That's all this is. A couple vacuum lines, they run up, run up here to the steel line that runs along the frame to the cross member and then it meets some rubber lines at the cross member those go back to your transfer case to actually control this system so usually if you've got a problem with your four-wheel drive on a second gen truck it's going to be something with the cat usually and more than likely most of the time it is not the cat itself it's a vacuum leak you've got to, either it's a vacuum switch on the transfer case your lines have got a hole in them somewhere. Um, so now what we're going to do, we'll put the truck in four-wheel drive here without the engine on. That way we don't have any vacuum. We'll reach in, we'll pull our transfer case lever. We got it in four-wheel drive. And you're going to see, because the CAD's not engaged, 
I can still free spin this wheel because the CAD isn't engaged. And now if I come down here to the drive shaft, since the transfer case is engaged, you can't turn the drive shaft. And that's on the transfer case end, not on the CAD end. All right, so now we're gonna fire the truck up. It'll take us just a second here, if you give me a minute. Always make sure, especially this one is a manual, make sure it's in neutral before you do something like this. I am standing on the ground, so I definitely don't want this truck to run me over. All right, so we've got the truck started now. And now it has vacuum there. The CAD is now, the CAD is now locked in. Yeah, you got a little bit of play in this system, but all that play comes from either the chain in your transfer case or your differential, some of it even in the axle shafts themselves. So we've got vacuum, we've got the system locked in. Solid as a rock. Well, solid as they're gonna get. We're gonna turn the engine off. Partially so you can hear me again. All right. So now that we've got the engine off and the CAD is locked in, once again, four wheel drive, we're in four wheel drive. Everything's locked up. Now, we're gonna take the transfer case shift lever back out of gear. We'll come back over and now we should be able to free spin the wheel. However, if you can see it back in here, now that we're free spinning the wheel, the transfer case, or the drive shaft is turning. The reason the drive shaft's turning, the CAD's engaged that forces the differential to turn the drive shaft. Hopefully this will help some of you guys out. I know this system can be a little complicated, but once you get into it, it's actually a pretty simple system and it doesn't take long to troubleshoot it. You guys have a great weekend and uh, hey, go out and turn those wrenches.